I mean, New Zealand's got a really fundamental problem here. Why are we not getting more investment in productive capital? And why is our savings rate so low and leaving us so dependent on foreign capital? Now, if you think about the basic structure of our tax system, i.e. we tax income, we tax the return on investment, not just saving, but all return on investment, and then we tax final expenditure. So if we go back to the basics, the main reason for the shift towards expenditure tax and away from income tax is to reduce the impact of tax generally on the return to investment. So why wouldn't you incentivise savings a lot more by reducing the income tax? Also? And if you think about a Nordic style approach, that is entirely consistent with that approach. Now, it's, it's a really interesting question to me of how we've ended up with this sort of tax structure, which seems to me to be less than ideal when we think about the importance of savings and the importance of investment. So if I'm an, if I'm an average, if I'm an average um, New Zealander um, looking at what you've got here, um, struggling to save a little bit of money, what are the major incentives that, that this was recommended? Um, if you're the average, yeah, it's a very good question. If you're, if you're an average New Zealander, your income is not going to do, let you do much saving anyway. So if you come back to the graphs about the uh, distribution of income by households, uh, the bottom four deciles of households don't save too much at all. So if you're up in the fifth or sixth deciles around the average, Yep, you've got a potential to save, but it's a marginal thing. Probably the more fundamental question is why would I support, if I'm a voter and I'm on an average income, why would I support this package? And the bottom line on that is because if there aren't changes, I'm going to be pretty concerned about my job. And I'm certainly going to be concerned about my children and grandchildren. And so these changes are of that fundamental nature. It's a pretty fundamental thing you've just said there too. You're saying the average New Zealander, um, in terms of their own personal circumstances, simply isn't earning enough money to save, so would get almost nothing in terms of an incentive to save over no, they would get an incentive. In terms of the personal circumstances, I appreciate the structural changes to the economy you're talking about, but yeah. then personally, there's almost nothing in what bills propose here. And I don't say the pejorative way, but that there's almost nothing here that would allow or incentivise them to save because they simply don't have enough money to save in the first place. Let's cut this into two bits. Firstly, what's the incentive if we take the position today and the position that if these changes were made, what would the incentive be for them to save? It would be higher. And it would be, if the whole package was introduced, it would be significantly higher. And then you'd have to think about what's the response going to be? Is that enough encouragement to cut back a bit on their expenditure and actually do additional savings. And then you have to think about the retirement position of those people. And if they are worried about government expenditure, they need to be worried about retirement and the whole thing with retirement savings is so that a person can have a lifestyle through their working life and then on retirement can maintain a similar lifestyle. And they need the money to be able to do that. You talk about... So, sorry, the person on the average income is going to be conscious of that. And if they are aware of a general climate in which government expenditure is under pressure, and they can't be as relaxed uh, about that environment, then the incentive to, to save 